Hello again. Well, in this video, I'm going to continue the facial preparation of the white-tailed deer. Last video I did uh, presented working on the ears. This video will concern itself with the facial details, and that is the eyelids, the nostrils, the nose pad, the lips, and the chin, and the various tools used to accomplish the job that need to be done prior to mounting. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Okay, here's the ear uh, a day after mounting and leaving it out to dry. It looks real good. Just the only place that is still moist is down, deep down in the ear here. Once this dries, it will also assume the dark red color. Uh, I, may, I may tone that up a little bit. I may tone the red down, uh, but I won't use paint. I will use uh, pan pastels. It's part of the finishing process I've started uh, doing. Well, on top of using the new paste for the ear liners, I've gone back to an old tried and true method for doing my eyes. Okay, it's simply the eye setting method. It's, it's an old school eye setting method. Uh, there are guys today like to call it the lay method. I guess they're sexually frustrated. I don't know. But uh, instead of tucking the skin, which always screws up the clay work, it's removed all the way to the very edge of the eyelids, as you can see here. And I'm going to show how I do that on the other, on the second eye opening. Okay, this is the eye before anything is being done to it. Um, there's a little skinning cut here, which will be repaired with the cyanoacrylate glue and the latex glove. But you can see how much, how much inner eyelid I still leave on it. It's it's good to keep the inner eyelid. It's good to keep the inner eyelid uh, skin long. Uh, this way, as it gets handled during the tanning process, they have a, they it, it will not make it easy to tear. So this is left long on the inside. It's begun, the paring down has begun, simply paring has begun using my straight edge paring knife. So I hold it by the blade and I simply work to separate the roots of the eyelashes. I want to split them here, like so. And I want to shave towards the the uh, opening of the eye. I want to shave in the, in the direction of, of the heavy membrane that's still attached to the eye. You definitely want to split this open real well and get get this skin thinned here. Like so. We're going to get this and we're going to go all the way. Now we're at the back edge of the eye. We're going to do all here. Okay, and you can see how thin the skin is getting as I'm shaving the eye membrane. Now I'm going to take a heavy scissor and I'm going to remove this heavy membrane right here. Okay, I've just trimmed away the heaviest of the eyelid material. Now, before this, before going back to the way I was originally taught, I used to thin this down, trim it, and tuck it under the clay, which inevitably always screwed up the clay work. Okay, this will allow the eyelid to lay against the, uh, the clay work, my nice finished clay work. Now... I'm going to trim away the remaining membrane right up close to the eyelid.
All right, here we go now. Just going to keep going. The tips of these scissors are sharper than the base. Just saying. Okay. Let's get around here and continue to thin, actually remove the membrane to bring the eyelid down to the thinnest eyelid possible. There we go. Now I'm going to... I've got a little repair to make here, so I'll do that, but I'm going to continue to trim, trim around this eyelid. I have a little repair here, and of course that repair here. This is the bottom lid. This is what you saw from the outside. All right, now I'm going to thin the upper lid as I did the lower and trim it away as well. The main thing is to separate these hair roots. And you're going to get, you're going to get some eyelashes come through. The roots are being cut after all. You need to shave them away. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to get the heavy scissor and trim this away. There we go. I'm going to trim the heavy tissue away. Again, this at one time would be trimmed, thinned, and tucked. And that just made me mean, angry, and, well, rhymes with trucked. It's amazing, I've gone back to my roots, essentially. And there's the heavy uh, upper eyelid tissue. Now, on to thinning the tissue, the remaining tissue, down to the edge of the eyelid. Get the little scissor, position it where I want, and stop trimming. First thing to go is its heavy corner. That's the front corner of the eye. And then I'm going to trim back this white membrane from the eyelid. Hopefully I could do it on camera without screwing up like I did the lower lid. It's a little tougher to work from behind the camera. Actually my hands are around the camera and the microphone cord. Ain't complaining, just saying what made me screw, screw things up. <laughs> Oi. Well, actually it would be better if the back of the curve was against the eyelid. Yeah, there we go. Much, much better. All right. I'm real pleased with how this is going. Oh, very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Now I'm going to trim up this front corner. And try and do it without putting a hole in the hide. Holes are bad, but they can be repaired. Oh! Poetry. Holes are bad, but they can be repaired. All right, I need to get this. 
I need to trim this a little closer so I have to do this off camera and there we are that white tissue that was right along the edge here has been trimmed away using the scissor in this fashion with the curve away from the eye with the curve down along the curve of the eyelid you tend to it tends to cut in and create slices that you don't want Okay, this ceramic cone was uh, produced by uh, uh, a member of the old Ohio Taxidermist Trade Register, or Otter. And uh, I, I filled it with foam. I had two. I dropped one, it broke. I got this one, I filled it with foam, and I, this is, I'm real careful with this. I prefer this over the polystyrene uh, cones that are manufactured today. Now I'm going to slip this up through the mouth opening into the eye socket and this is going to be my method. See how beautiful this fits? This is what I'm going to use to finish trimming off the eyelid. I still like to use my paring knife for this. I have used the scythe knife, but this knife is what I learned with. I prefer this even over scalpels. Scalpels were designed, scalpel blades were designed to cut, not to pare away. They were designed to slice, and that's what they do best. So here we've got this now, pulling it taut and just paring away carefully. I don't want to put any more holes in the eye area. Move around to the back of the eye and do the same thing. Very, very light scraping. I'm not really digging into the skin a whole lot. Just some light scraping here is what's going on. And it is thinning it. Proof of which is you can see the tissue lifting away here. I hope you can see it because I'm not looking at the view screen. I'm looking at the cape, which is what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> Okay, there we are, lift it away. Okay, now we can come down and shave away from the eye towards the lacrimal gland. strong glasses. Press on my nose, that's what's making me sniff. I'm not a cocaine addict. I'm a caffeine addict. I'm a coffee addict. I like to try and keep the lacrimal sac intact. Some guys remove it. I leave it and I tuck it. Thin this area here. There we go. And thin ahead of it. Wonderful. As you see all that little, little flesh bits coming off. Now just a little more around the eye. I should say around the eyelid. Working back towards the main part of the head. Or the brows actually. Same thing on the bottom. I have a little bit here that just appears to be a little heavy right here. I'm going to take that down and, and away. Not much. It's 
not going to seem like much, but on the tip of the knife is is the proof positive that paring things away. This was already mostly done, so. And I have a PVC piece of PVC, piece of PVC pipe. pipe over here. Is the holder for my ceramic cone so that it never falls and breaks. It never rolls off the table, falls and breaks. Okay, let's come back here to the subject at hand. There are the eyelid openings. Nice, nice. Nice, nice. And I'll do the minor repairs that need to be done. Next on the face will be thinning the nostrils, the nose pad, and the pads of the chin. These are ne the next items to be tackled. The main component in this next step is this shaving ball uh, that uh, I purchased from Joe Combs Tax Army Supply, Combs Classics. Uh, it's a polyurethane casting. Um, it's got a good solid round shape to it. It has a nice large base. You can either clamp it to your table and be able to work on it, or you can slip it under the cape and be able to work on it. Um, it works well with knives. It works well with a Skype knife. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this deer's schnoz, as we call it, back east, the nose, skin, and I'm going to fit it First thing over I'll do the is ball. push the nostril lining in. Then turn the entire cape inside out and position it over the ball for working. Once it's in position, it's a simple matter of starting to shave it down. I'm going to begin using my Skype knife, and the whole trick here I have found is to use as light a touch as possible. So, we just get the thing started. Now, bear in mind, the Skype knife was developed for leather crafting. And it's actually best used against dry leather. That's why using it here, it works very well. But you really need to just be aware of it can go through the skin. You want to keep tension pulled away from the knife, as here. You want to pull down on the area being worked and simply use a light touch and a constant scraping motion to reduce the thickness of the skin. Like so. The main thing you want to do is remove all these little, these little tiny tendons. They will otherwise cause the nose pad to shrivel. You don't want a shriveled nose pad. Nobody likes a shrunken nose. In the world of grooming horses, we used to say everyone loves a shiny hiney. In the world of taxidermy, we say no one likes a shriveled nose. And you can work this all the way around the muzzle, removing the heavier uh, flesh that's left on the face.
And you want to be careful of removing the meat from the knife blade. This is a single edge razor blade, very sharp. It will also do you well to be sure you keep a sharp blade in the tool at all times. If the blade gets dull, get rid of it. They're cheap enough. Don't cheapen yourself and don't cheapen your work by trying to resharpen these blades. Use a new blade. Don't be a cheapskate. You should be charging enough that you don't have to worry about being cheap with your tools. You can continue this all the way down and around the mouth section. You really want to be careful around the lips. You take this all the way down to the chin. Bruce Campbell, I hope you're not watching, but I'm reducing the thickness of the chin. Now, this will get clogged. As you can see, this will get clogged with the, uh, the tissue matter. You want to get that out of there. Just be real careful removing it. Don't do like I did. Don't slice your fingers open on this thing. Very easy to do. And when it gets clogged, I'll tell you right now, when, it, when the blade clogs, it's going to be difficult to remove any more flesh from whatever part of the face you're working on. When you start seeing the little hair roots, you'll be seeing the roots of the hair. You'll know you're getting real close. To being done. Mostly you want to feel, it's best to go by feel as well as by eye, but you want to feel that this is smooth and doesn't have any ridges from the shaving process. And what the Skype knife is doing right now is a type of shaving process. I wouldn't use it on my chin to shave, but then again, I don't shave too often. As it is, I did trim my beard and a friend of ours this morning said, Oh, I have a baby face. And I said, yeah, like a baby ape. So I, I might let it get a little fuzzy again. Here we go. You want to be careful. There are already enough little gashes in this from the skinning process. I don't want to put any more in if I can possibly avoid it. No more cuts. No more tears. Yeah, now that just took down a real, real good amount of mess. Now, you can see here this side has been shaved, this side has not. And you can see the difference. You can see my fingertips here, and you can see them here, but not so, not so, not so easily as you can see them here. Shaved side, unshaven side. Thin, still thick. The ceramic cone is in its PVC pipe holder and I pull down on the nostrils, not enough to tear them, but enough that I have tension against the nostril skin while I use the Skife knife.
Now let's trim this, some of this away with the scissors. It will be trimmed down eventually. But for right now, what I'm doing is I'm thinning the nostril lining. Trying to avoid putting any unnecessary holes as I go. I make a few swipes. I clean off the blade. I want it really, really clean for doing this delicate area, this delicate tissue membrane. Okay, now we'll pull the cone out. Put it off to the side in its little... PVC holder, turn it right side out, and I'm going to begin trimming the nostril skin. Just like so. just like so. Now yeah, that's nice. Make it a little neater. Take this uneven section here and let me try and even it up some. And I'll show you my next my next little step. You don't need a lot of nostril lining. At this point, I've gone ahead and I've um, trimmed down the opposite nostril uh, skin. Um, it also makes it easier to put the nose back on the, be back on the ball, and uh, continue to do some thinning after the thick nostril skin is gone. You can get much closer to where you need to be without that thick, heavy skin getting in the way. Now, the next thing is pretty cute. What we've got now is a replacement nose from Headquarters Supply. These are ex also excellent for reference for carving out uh, the nose on a form, as I showed in my previous video on on uh, carving out the nostrils of a white-tailed deer. What I like to do after I get the uh, shaving and the nostril trimming completed, I like to fit this, fit the cape, or at least the nose, over this little replacement nose form and just see how all things line up. Nostrils, Nostril openings, I should say, the nostril wings. Uh, I can stretch it around and make sure everything is thin enough. I can taxi the skin into the proper places. And you see, this is what I mean when I say you don't need a great deal of uh, nostril skin. It will get glued down. Whether you use one of these or you carve out your own nostrils on the, on the head form, Having less skin to worry about gluing down and tuck makes this job a whole lot nicer, a whole lot easier. And you can see right here how that's working. Okay, I'll just pull this back a little bit. Now, I won't be using this in the, in the actual mount. I've already carved out the deer's nostrils and installed the septum. But this is what I mean when I say you don't need a lot of skin, inner 
nostril skin. In fact, I may shave, cut some of this down even more. But you have a nice feel for how your skin is going to line up. You can tell right away if you've removed enough during the shaving process. You can either have a little bit of hair showing on the outside of the nostril on the bottom or just a little or none at all depending on how it fits. But this is kind of a nice, um, nice way to set up what you're doing to get a feel for the work as far as how much nostril skin you have and what you don't need. Well, we don't need it, as you'll see, is at the back here. We, I can really take this down. I can cut up and in and around here so that this lays more flat without any overlapping or without any, you know, wrinkles and or whatnot. But don't forget, this is not a, this is not being mounted right here, so there's no paste taxiing the skin around the nose form. Okay, but you you get it you get a you get a good idea of what we're shooting for, as far as the thinness of the nose pad. Okay, that's a little trick I've been doing on all the deer since. Uh, well, I I originally used to use my own plaster castings that had the nostrils carved out but then these hit the market and uh, even if you drop them they're not going to break like the plaster castings break <laughs> and yes I have broken my plaster castings I've broken many of them and uh, but this is just a neat little trick I like to do to help make sure that my nose skin is thin enough and even enough and shaved down enough and I'll continue to do the little prep on here. And then the next thing we'll see will be the little buck going up on his form with his velvet antlers. So until that time, we're out of here.